Alrighty, let's watch this in full first. There's audio. Like the wind. I can't see it. I feel it. Okay, is she? It's like the wind. It's like the wind. I think she says it's like the wind, and not I like the wind. It's like the wind. I can't see it. I feel it. Okay. To be quiet, it might just be me. But watch out for your uh, for the audio. Now you're asking here. For this one, I'm especially having a problem making it seem like she's talking to the dragon. I think what you can do is you can decide where she's going to look. I mean, if you have her look up and imagine the neck is a bit lower, she can always look at the dragon and then do that and look down and then the neck goes up to uh, this or where you're going to have it a when you bring the neck up while she does this it's going to be easier because of contact if you're like this and then you move the neck around all the time either you parent this it might be trickier to keep that contact but if the neck goes down or up here while the hands go down it might be easier to do the connection points actually i like that you have this underneath so you can hide the difficulty of that well, that might be something. I think in terms of talking to the dragon, uh, it could be something where you can also start like this and then look over and then down. Uh, it could be here. And while she says that, she looks over here or she looks over here. There are many ways. I think it's going to be enough that she has a moment where she looks over. I think if she's like this and then she quickly looks over there, and then wherever you want to go, probably straight into this. It might feel like I'm talking and I'm quickly addressing this. And the moment, you know, you have, we understand that there's, these are wings and there's like the neck is moving. We understand this is a dragon. You can have a little bit of a tail here and that will tell us what she's on. And I think that's going to be okay. I can't see it. I feel it. Yeah, the rest is great. I'm just watch out, you know, intersections and stuff like that, but... It's going to be more about technical things as you have some movement, if that's what you're choosing to do, um, so that the intersections are taken care of. Other than that, to be honest, even if we... I mean, you want her to talk to the dragon, but even then... It, it, to me, it works if she's talking to herself, to the dragon, to someone else off screen, to not the huge dragon that's off screen. It's just, it's a nice line. I like that setup. I think having this composition where she is more on the right side gives you room for the the tail uh the tail to show up, but for the wing to move as well but she is fairly you know screen right heavy there so compositionally you want to balance that a little bit unless you want to recompose this where she ends up being more here and then we have that and there i say the dragon head is in here and she can look and the dragon can look and then the dragon head goes up you know what I mean? Like imagine she's here, head here, and she says that while looking, and then you can have like a nice soft blink and the head goes up. I mean, there are many, many ways. Uh, and I'm asking you, actually, you can tell me why you composed it like this. Is there anything else you want to introduce here? I don't see it in the email. Um, but if not, it, you know, it gives you room for, again, for the wings, back there, the tail, something you want to do. But I like the setup. But other than that, it's also, I'm going to turn the sound off. It's still fairly rough. So... What I would say moving forward, watch out like overextensions on arms. Do not go super straight. You're going to have to have variations and, and um, you know, some changes in the finger posing. What is this? Is this going to be a scaly dragon? Are these feathers later on? Like, what is the material? And then you're hiding contact here. That's going to be okay. But then, you know, poses and, and, and intersections, finger poses, squishiness on cheeks, maybe some hair interaction or just at least some pushing. And then through all of this, even through there, is this because the, and by this I mean, is the foot angled like this because the stomach and chest area, so the chest area comes out. So imagine, you know, there's a bulbous thing here and the leg foot rests like this. Or would it make more sense for this to drop almost like a horse where there's room, you know, so kind of think about those things here because this kind of makes sense. She's little. But then when she goes forward, 
would then that be a bit more droopy and dangling down? Other than that, with the sound off, it's still all really cute. Yeah, just moving forward, swatch out. This is for anybody who does stepped. This, stuff like that. This is a big move over one frame. So this is going to take longer. And is it going to be a quick where she just goes, mm, I need comfort. Or is it going to be something with, a, something with a slow blink and a slow head down. Just think about those big transitions, what that's going to be timing wise. And then because of that acting wise. And this seems to be potentially an IK arm. So watch out when you have a straight into a bend that it also kind of takes the wrist with it a little bit in the, in the hand. So you don't have that same angle, same angle look to it, which is going to be very IK. You can see this here, how it's somewhat staying. It's actually going even lower. So watch out for non-broken, um, you know, hand poses and stuff like that. And that's kind of that. I really like this. I like the line. I like the setup. It's, it's really neat. It's a cool idea. And that's that. All right, there's an email. You can sign up, you can start whenever you want, you can submit whenever you want, you get 16 submissions. Either way, a like and subscribe would be awesome. All right, thank you.